Good morning and welcome to worship this day. I usually begin by saying welcome to Hitchcock Presbyterian Church, but of course, most of you are not at Hitchcock Presbyterian Church this morning. You are hopefully at home uh, being careful with one another and being safe uh, in the privacy of your own home. I am thankful to have Dr. John King here, our Minister of Music, and Steve Taylor here to help us as well this day uh, so that we can be in worship together with one another. This is a perfect time for us to be reminded that the church is more than a building, it is more than bricks and mortar, that the church is you and me, all of us together as one community. And we can be that community online if we need to be, we can worship God from wherever we are. And so I am thankful this day that you have chosen to take time to be in this place and in this time together with me. Uh, let me just make a couple of announcements as I always do. The first being that uh, hopefully everyone that is a member of Hitchcock received a letter about our new associate pastor who will be joining us soon. Reverend Catherine Pater, we are extraordinarily excited to have her here. Hopefully she's watching somewhere at some point, so I'll say hello uh, to Catherine. And we have unfortunately had to reschedule her weekend, which was supposed to be this weekend. Uh, we are hoping to have her here with us next weekend uh, for a reception at 4 p.m. on Saturday in the Hancock Room and the congregation meeting immediately following worship. If that changes, of course, we will let everyone know. Uh, but just wanted to make you all aware of that. Uh, also, as a good uh, online preacher, it's important that I mention giving uh, this morning as well. And so you are able to do that because offering is an important part of worship. Uh, by going to our website, uh, to hitchcockpresby.org, uh, and looking at the giving options there, we have lots of different ways to give. And of course, we uh, are always available checks being mailed in as well. Uh, but offering is an important piece of what it means to be in worship with one another. Uh, I believe those are the announcements for this morning. So why don't we begin uh, our worship together uh, as one people trying to focus our hearts and our minds and our spirits in the midst of whatever distractions you have around you at the moment. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have called us to be members of one body. Join us with those who in all times and places have praised your name, that with one heart and mind we may show the unity of your church and bring honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is God that hath made us, and we are his. We are God's people, and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving, and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God, and bless the Lord's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness unto all generations. Amen. We begin, as we often do in the life of the Presbyterian Church, and that is with words of confession. And to this day, we will have a litany of confession, and I ask that you all repeat the words, O God, deliver us, when it makes sense to do so. And so I will look to you to say, O God, deliver us, at times during this prayer with one another. Let us bring our unworthiness before God with hope and with trust, knowing that we will indeed be forgiven. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone are good and holy. Purify our lives and make us brave disciples. We do not ask you to keep us safe, but to keep us loyal, so that we may serve you all the days of our lives. From lack of reverence, for truth and beauty, from a calculating or sentimental mind, from going along with mean and ugly things, O oh God, deliver, deliver us. us. From cowardice that dares not face truth, laziness intent with half truth, or arrogant, arrogance that thinks we know it all, O oh oh God, God, deliver, deliver us. us. From artificial life and worship, from all that is hollow and insincere, O oh God, God, deliver, deliver us. us. From trite ideals and cheap pleasures, from mistaking hard vulgarity for human, from being dull, pompous, or rude, from putting down our neighbors, O oh God, deliver, deliver us. us. From cynicism about others, from intolerance and from cruel indifference, from being satisfied with things as they are in the church or in the world around us, from failing to share your indignation about injustice, O oh oh God, God, deliver us. From selfishness, self-indulgence, and self-pity, O oh oh God, God, deliver, deliver us. us. From token concerns for the poor, from lonely and from loveless people, from confusing faith with good feeling, for love, for confusing love with wanting to be loved, O oh oh God, God, deliver us. For everything in us that may hide your light from the world, O oh God, God, deliver, deliver us. us. Let us continue our prayer in silent confession. Friends, the saying is true and it bears repeating that Christ came for us, Christ lived for us, Christ died for us, and Christ rose for us. Believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ you are forgiven. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Romans. Paul's letter to the church in Rome, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. Listen for words that I think you've probably heard many times before, and hopefully words that provide some comfort in these days. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, Will he not with him also give everything else up? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. And who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or 
edged sword. For as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. But no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Friends, this is by far one of the most bizarre things I think I've ever had to do in ministry. I've been a minister for over 10 years now, and never once have I had to cancel a worship service. And of course, we're not canceling this morning. Instead, we're coming to you through this little camera that is before me. And I just imagine all of you sitting there on the other end of your computer screens and us all worshiping together. It is a strange time, to be sure. As I shared with many of you via email this week, I have encountered so many different emotions from so many of you over the last couple of weeks as we have been hearing a new story after a new story and really beginning to grasp the enormity of what it is that we are dealing with in this moment. Some of those emotions have been anger, some have been sadness, some of course have been fear and anxiety, some have been in uncertainty about the future and what it is that things will be like in this new normal that we seem to be talking about. We don't know what next week will bring. In fact, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. But there are some things that we can say to one another that are certain and are sure in this life. And that's why I wanted to read to you this morning from Romans chapter 8, because I wanted you to hear those words once again, that there is nothing in life or in death that can separate us from the love of God. Over the last week or so, especially as we have been isolated in our little cocoons of our lives, I have borne witness to so many acts of generosity and kindness. Our deacons have been working so hard to reach out to all those who are homebound or home who might be in need. Our elders are giving leadership in such important ways. Our staff has been with one another over email and calling one another constantly. Alexander has been over in the old man's getting it ready for Reverend Pater to come and to be a part of this worshiping community. In so many ways, we have cared for one another in the midst of all of this Craziness, and it is evidence, it is evidence of the fact that love conquers everything else. There is nothing in life or in death that is so scary, that is so dark, that the light of God cannot touch it. There is nothing in life or in death that can take away the love that we have been promised in this world and in the next. I skipped a little bit over Lent this morning. I went right into Romans 8 and talked about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and talked about the love of God. And that's okay for us to do in this moment because that is how important it is that we are reminded that in this life, even if we are sequestered alone in a room by ourselves in this moment, in this life, there is no moment where we are completely alone. You are loved. I love you. John loves you. Everybody here at Hitchcock loves you so very much. And more important than all of that is the reality that even if none of that existed, even if none of that were true, which it certainly is, but even if it weren't, the fact remains that there is nothing in life or in death that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Be at peace this day. Do not be afraid. For the God of all that is and was and ever shall be still holds you in the palm of his hands. Thanks be to God. Amen.
When I think I'm going under, part the waters alone. When I feel the waves around me calm the sea. When I cry for help, oh, hear me, Lord, and hold out your hand. Touch my life, still the raging storm in me. God of love and God of justice, we give you thanks for this opportunity to come before you this day in worship. We give you thanks for the gifts in our lives, for a safe place to be, for family to gather around, for friends to reach out with phone calls and emails, for all the ways, O oh Lord, that we are reminded of your beloved community. We are overwhelmed with gratitude. For children and for laughter and for moments of rest. For times when we can truly gather together and be at peace and be reminded of what is truly important in this life. We give you thanks. And yet, O oh God, we do come to you this morning with burdens upon our hearts, with anxiety within our spirits, with fear of what might be coming. We think of those who are ill around us, for those who are afraid. We think of our economy and what that will mean for so many people who are already suffering in that way. We think of this world, O oh God, and we say a prayer for the leaders of all nations, for doctors and for nurses, for healthcare professionals who give so much of themselves, for first responders who show up each and every time. We are grateful for all of the ways, oh God, that we are reminded that we are indeed in that web of mutuality where we are called to care for one another in this day and every single day. And so we give you thanks for those who do so in such important ways. We ask, oh God, that you would indeed bring healing where it is possible, that you would bring comfort to those who are healing, that you would bring peace those who are filled with anxiety this day. That you would be, bring a reminder of your presence in every time and every space that we might be reminded that there is no darkness so dark that your light cannot overcome it. O 
Oh God, enable us to be filled with hope this day. To find moments where we are truly at peace, where we can be with one another in important and significant moments that we can be reminded of the love that you have given through your Son, Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to see you everywhere we look this day. Oh God, open our ears to hear you and open our hearts that we might receive you this day and every day, regardless of what it is that is outside our doors. Let us be at peace knowing that there is nothing in life or in death that can separate us from your love, that there is hope in all things, that there is faith that believes all things. And so, God, we come to you as your children, lifting up those who are weighing upon our hearts and our minds, and knowing that you hold them in your loving embrace. We say all of these things, O oh God, in our hearts of hearts, using the words that your Son taught us. We say them together, saying, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, I hope you will indeed have a wonderful day this day, that you will have moments where you can appreciative of that which is most important in this life. And so I commit you all now to the mercy and to the power and to the faithfulness of the eternal Lord our God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the communion of all the saints be with you this day and forever and ever.